What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about the Halloween franchise once again in this video here today. Going to continue going over some of these scrap scripts, pitches that I'm combing through to kind of share my thoughts on it here on my channel. The latest one now will be for Halloween 5, a pitch from Robert Harders. For those of you who guessed it correctly in the community, shout out to you. Yes, you were correct, but I was not going to tell you were correct until now by you watching this video. Uh, Robert Harders pitch, I would just say, is a complete 360 from the ending of four and something i'm kind of glad we never got although it also sounds like a version of halloween ends we almost got very earlier on in the series back in the 80s when we know halloween 5 dropped so with robert harder's pitch it's a pitch that involved michael being struck by lightning after the events of four and being brought back to life and from there it was basically a frankenstein s story michael was no longer evil and was being hunted down by the townspeople sounding a lot like halloween kills while dr loomis was trying to reach michael and trying to stop the towns free townspeople from killing michael now see robert had also touched on this a couple years back in an interview with dread central and i'll leave a link to it in the description he said i knew what kind of story they wanted of course and i knew that kind of story wouldn't interest me so i put together a pitch that as i remember it started precisely where halloween forehead ended which as i am remembering it right now had the michael myers character at the bottom of that collapsed mine shaft or some similar place and he was dead so the shootout from the ending of four in this iteration if we had got it would have been Michael ultimately being killed. He went on to say, and I imagined him there and remembered the classic scene in the original Frankenstein movie in which the creature is brought to life in Dr. Frankenstein's lab, surrounded by all of that equipment. And so I proposed opening the story with a tremendous storm, thunder, fierce lightning, the shattered timbers, concrete, wires, and rebar entangling and supporting the lifeless body of Michael Myers and channeling the storm's life, giving electrical current from the heavens into the body of our creature and bringing him back to life. Don't like that at all. From there, the Frankenstein story took over my imagination. You've probably seen Frankenstein the movie, but have you ever read the book? If not, you should. There's a different kind of horror at work in the novel, and I became very excited about trying to tell a story that evoked both Frankenstein the movie and Frankenstein the book. The details of the pitch are long forgotten, except for one key element, which is that the revived Michael Myers was no longer or would no longer be the embodiment of of pure evil instead the harm caused by him and i should say the significant harm that he would cause throughout the movie was to be incidental unintentional in response to attacks upon him from the townspeople who still wanted he wanted him dead the result of his own need to survive in a world that was out to destroy him because it believed him to be the embodiment of evil he once was in this scenario michael myers was to have only one friend the person who knows him better than anyone else who knows to his horror the evil of michael myers past i mean dr loomis the donald pleasance character think of the scene in frankenstein where the creature meets the child by the pool of water that's the innocence i would have loved to try to have loomis discover in michael can you imagine loomis's disbelief at even the possibility thereby creating a terrible conflict for loomis how to save michael myers from the mob to see if he can get through to through to him communicate to him Loomis is a scientist, don't forget, and that he is capable and often the only one capable of understanding of the depth of the evil that has existed in Michael. I believe to the depth of Loomis' own understanding of humanity, the movie then becomes about Loomis trying to save Michael from the mob as he gets closer and closer to reaching Michael as a human being. The movie would have to end with Michael's demise, something closer to the way it was handled in the novel, I thought. I don't recall anything specific about the young girl, though. Now, see, this part is where he starts recounting what was going to happen with Jamie's character. Because if you've heard all of this just now, you're probably already starting to think midway. Well, how does that sound like a natural progression to take after Jamie's ending in four? W what about Jamie? I will say this before I start talking about Jamie. This whole concept completely sounds as though it's coming from someone who has a good intention with making a proper movie but you don't need to do it in a franchise that would at this point have been five movies deep this sounds like something that would be best to make in its own complete new franchise because after the events of four something like this transpiring sounds like a wtf in a lot of ways again this could have been our halloween ends the progressions here sound completely unnatural seem out of order in comparison to the first four movies if you're considering them or first three i should say when counting what's really canon in that timeline he went on to say this is how jamie would have fitted fitted into the uh into the film 
See, my basic idea turned the whole horror movie concept on its head. Michael Myers was not the monster in my version. The monsters in the movie were to be the townspeople, the authorities, who spurred by pure irrationality, fear primarily, based on a lot of false assumptions, were out to destroy something they thought was evil. But as Loomis grew to understand, may not be evil at all. Traditionally, Michael and who may even have the potential for great good. That theme resonated for me. The trick for me, had I ever written the thing, would have been to include the young girl in the mounting danger Michael faced as her sympathy and commitment to his safety grew since she, since she because of her innocence, would conceivably come to see Michael, see in Michael the goodness that Loomis hopes to see in him. That whatever happened in that mine shaft has brought to life a goodness in Michael's nature that he had been denied previously and that was equivalent in its potential power to the evil that had once existed but which has been killed off or perhaps it's the girl who would have seen it first and helped convince loomis but none of this was ever taken seriously i think they offered me the job because they liked my imagination even though the specifics i came up with were summer summarily rejected you know i will say this i'm kind of glad they were rejected because again i see no reason for us to have gotten a movie of this magnitude with a story narrative like this and when you think about what has happened in the original halloween halloween 2 halloween 4 for it to be a complete 360 and take an approach like this and then also considering jamie's ending at the end of four it's like what are you doing <laughs> i'm certain like if you were to just grade it on its own merit without considering the movies that came prior sure on a technical standpoint could have had great cinematography could have been well directed could have had phenomenal performances but the writing choices the writing choices are what would have buckled the movie down and what would have probably made this be our halloween ends at the time but of course we know halloween ends is now our halloween ends of the time it's just very funny to me when you come across pitches like this because i had not read this until last week how similar a lot of stuff could have been in the past that we could have gotten but actually came to life years later in the recent Halloween trilogy. You guys can let me know what you think about a pitch like this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.